How's it going everybody? Rybrad right here today and we are back with our NHL 22 franchise mode with the Anaheim Ducks here at season number two after a very, very productive offseason. You guys gave me a lot of support on the last one. Can we get that same level of support on this one? Until you guys miss the mark, I'm going to keep asking for it. Can we hit 20 likes on this episode? You guys have been absolutely killing it. And it makes me super happy to hear that you guys are enjoying this series. And I'm having a lot of fun with it and I hope you guys are too. Um, also, if you are new here, make sure to subscribe. I know a lot of you are not subscribed, so hopefully if you've made it this far into episode five, six, I think it's five, uh, of the, our Ducks franchise mode, hopefully you've considered subscribing. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But guys, let's go ahead and jump into today. We are ready at the start of the season. After, like I said, a very productive offseason, that's going to see Santivori, Zegris, and Raquel getting the plus, thanks to the X-Factor ability, I assume, from Taro Santivori being a sniper being next to two playmakers i just i think i think that's what's going to happen here what's what's going on i don't know why his x-factor chemistry line contributor is magnetic i mean we know for a fact that he is make it snappy we have that fully scouted but i don't know okay ea uh, then we have peyton krebs who we acquired in season number one he played a year i believe in the ahl putting up 59 points 16 goals, was a minus 8, but had a pretty good season nonetheless. Not a ton of power play points, so that was a lot of even strength. And now he's going to come up and get second line ice time, playing on a line with Sam Steele, who's nicely grown into an 84, and Maxime Comtois, who, you know, I, I might want to play over Ricard Raquel at some point, but, I mean, you can see there, it just does not fit with the chemistry. Raquel is somebody I'd like to hang on to. He can maybe help us make the playoffs this year. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking to be a wild card team. Uh, then our free agent signing, Logan Brown, there with Getzloff and Jones. I actually do want to check out something real quick. Santavori does not drop when moving him down. Okay, that's interesting. I wasn't sure because he was an 83, I believe, when we drafted him. Grew to an 85, and I didn't know if that was because of the plus two chemistry or his X factor or, or what it was. So he's actually an 85. We know that for a fact. But Max Jones is going to play with Getzloff and Logan Brown, and then... Uh, Benoit Olivier Gruel uh, is going to play with Troy Terry and Emil Bemstrom. Emil Bemstrom is not as good at faceoff, which is why he's on the wing there. Uh, he is a sniper with two two-way forwards, so we'll see how that goes. Maybe I want him playing there. No, I don't. And then we're going to take a look at the defense. Uh, and it's Hampus Lindholm and Jamie Drysdale. Lindholm, another one of those guys like Raquel that's really going to help us out and help transition the younger generation uh, into, you know, stardom, into leading the team. Getzloff, a little bit older, uh, but I would put him in that same bucket as Raquel and Lindholm. Then we got Jacob Larson and Brandon McNabb, who we signed, and then Josh Mahura and Brendan Gooley. So Brendan Gooley we gave a lot of ice time to last season. Uh, he's an awful minus, plus minus, but I wasn't too worried about that. He w did put up 20 points, 40 penalty minutes, which is quite a few, but he is going to get a little bit less ice time per game, I think. Uh, then in seasons past because we brought in McNabb and then in goal you guys know the story it's John Gibson he is elite uh, on a really really awful team that was tanking he still put up 915 and 264 so can't really complain about it scratch we got Derek Grant Sonny Milano and Alexander Volkov who are just kind of replacement level uh, in the AHL you guys can see nothing too special or significant down there let's go ahead and pick up I think three uh, free agent forwards four maybe it might be four free agent forwards and then actually take a look at who is still available. A couple RFAs, Josh Hosang and Dylan Strom are, are, are RFAs. Dustin Brown remains unsigned. And you know what? I don't think I'm going to sign him. He could be somebody we look to sign maybe at the end of this episode if he's still unsigned. Uh, he doesn't want a lot of money. He could be the perfect kind of guy to throw in there on the third, fourth line. Uh, but at least for now, we're going to look at two-way forwards. Um, or two-way contracts, excuse me, not two-way forwards. Michael Dalcall kind of fits. Lucas Johansson. Actually, Lucas Johansson is the perfect kind of guy to put in the AHL. We're going to offer him a contract for two years. He's still an RFA afterwards. Hopefully, he accepts. Kyle Clifford, no thank you. Dominic Cahoon, Evan Rodriguez could be guys to go after, but they're a little bit older. Then again, it's not the end of the world. Remy Ellie as well. So, we'll pick up Remy Ellie. Why not? Uh, one year. That's totally fine with me. I am being a little bit more picky with who I send to the AHL just because I don't want to get any anybody and everybody. I do want to get guys that could maybe um, contribute or be part of the future uh, of our team. But for now, it's really just looking at guys like Engvall for one year. It's, it's nothing too crazy. And then, is that James Neal? That is the real deal, James Neal. He's 35, but he's going to give us some veteran presence down there in the AHL. So why the heck not? Uh, we need to do need to hit a few more contracts down there. Um, and I think we should be all set. So let's go ahead and sim to the regular season here. Wait for James Neal accepted. 
Uh, Stenlin accepted, Engvall accepted, Johansson accepted, and Remy Alley accepted. So I think that Johansson uh, deal might end up being a steal in the future. So if we go ahead and take a look at the lines, we'll just best lines it down in the AHL. Um, they shouldn't change too much. Yeah, as you can see, maybe moving Danny O'Regan down, uh, moving Pierre Engvall up could be the move here, but you can still see Perot. Uh, Jacob Perot is probably going to be ready to come up to the NHL next season, which is super exciting. Michael Spotcheck, maybe. Galode uh, has probably not got a lot of upside in him, but Braden Tracy here as well, another guy that's got some upside playing with Neil. Uh, Bittner is what? He's a power forward, playmaker, power forward. Do we have any snipers down here? Uh, would Remy Ali, would Galode make this line better? Would Perot make this line better? Would Tracy be better served on the first line than Galode? I think he would. Uh, and then we'll move Galode down. Engvall, can any of these other guys play center? Does not look like it. Remy Ali will go down to, their, to the fourth line and whatever. I just want to give Tracy and Perot as much ice time because Tracy, uh, you know, can actually grow for us as a medium top six. Defensively, Lucas Johansson now becomes a star potential player for us in the AHL, our star defenseman. I say star potential, it's not really that, but he's the only guy with any significant upside down there in the AHL. So maybe, just maybe, uh, he can come up and be a third defenseman, third pairing defenseman, play with Mahura next season if Brendan Gooley jumps and then maybe we get rid of Lindholm or McNabb leaves or something like that. Uh, so that's at least the plan I have in mind, but I'm really excited to see just what our X-Factor superstar does on the first line, Taro Santavuri, and I, I actually kind of want, I want to see what he looks like, I want to get a feel for his kind of player, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at him in the edit player menu, Santavuri, we will select that and edit him, what number is he wearing, I believe, yes, it, oh, look at the smile, he's just happy to be here, he's got the tilted visor, the high tilt, Looks a little tired, needs a little bit of sleep, just like I do. Uh, but he's number 50, Santavuri. Uh, just look at it, look, looking good. Very solid facial hair, you know, I don't know. Um, but we're not going to change a single thing. I just kind of wanted to pop in there and look at our new draft pick. Everybody else is a real player, so we kind of know what they look like. Uh, but I will do that throughout this series to kind of get a vibe of, uh, of what guy's got that little pizzazz and flair. You know, the yellow laces like Ovi or something like that, or a tinted visor. I know his tilt is all the way as high as it gets, so... Uh, we'll see how it goes, but I'm, I'm pretty excited to see some of these players that we draft and actually kind of give them more of a storyline this season. Let's go ahead and get up to the first game of the season, uh, preseason. Let's see how we do. It's usually a barometer for how you're going to do uh, at the regular season. We are 3-3-1. Three, three and one. Okay, so I'm going to let our scouts do their thing, I think. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. We ran into a big issue with that last year. I'm going to go assign the scouts, and then we can start the simulation and we'll probably get up to about January 1st in this episode. I'll probably check for Dustin Brown at December 1st, but you guys will see that in about two seconds. All right, guys, the scouts are assigned, and I've got to say something caught my eye here, and you guys will probably notice it very, very quickly. Um, I was going through, and I saw somebody in the top here named Taro Santavori playing in, in Liga. Uh, and is medium elite. We know he's NHL ready. I mean, he's got quick picks, so it's not the same player. We've got a duplicate Taro Santavori, Santavori uh, coming into the NHL. I don't know if that's a popular name. I doubt it's a popular name. If you, if I have any Finns uh, or or Finnish people watching this video right now, please comment because this is something I really want to know. Is this like John Smith or something like that, the most common name possible? Or is it frankly common like Joe or something like that? Um, because Taro Santavori coming into the league twice uh, concerned me for a second. But it looks like he's a different player. He's 5'10", 173, two-way forward. Uh, and we already know a little bit about some of these guys. So that's that's good. I don't have to scout them. Um, but yeah, this is the Connor Bedard draft. And I'm surprised there's somebody above him. So they might be franchise potential. Could be a good year to go out and acquire another first round pick. But we can do that halfway through the season. Let's get through the first month and see, just see how the new head coach and the new roster does for us. Let's go ahead. How many games do we got? We got three, six, nine. We got nine games. So we'll go for the first 10 games of the season. See how we do. We start off with three straight wins. Some big wins against some pretty good opponents. Losing overtime to Detroit. Uh, but beating Vancouver is good because they're in our division. And we just seem to be picking up points. Uh, and a Derek Grant for Adam Henrique trade that we also pick up a fourth but have to give up a fifth and a sixth. I don't want Adam Henrique back. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, guys have, you guys made that trade last year. You guys don't get to undo it, okay? Um, but you guys can see 6-2-2. Two, and two. 
After a very, very good start, uh, we made, won four of our first six games and then kind of split the next going two, one, and one. I'll take that any day of the week. And so far, I know it's early, very, very early. But Trevor Zegras has nine points in 10 games played, and that's the kind of thing you want to see. The Ducks there, that's us, in first place with 14 points and a game in hand on the Flames. So that is really what you want to see to start off there. I'm not going to go in-depth in the stats. Uh, we're going to get to the end, probably December 1st. Check out the stats, see how people are playing. Then we'll get to the end of December, uh, which is where I let the scouts go till. And just see how we're doing, see what we're trending towards. Did they say it was going to be a bit weaker than normal? I always dismiss that way too fast. I don't think it really matters, though. Um, anyway, so far, a couple losses, but then we bounce back with three straight wins, losing the Coyotes, but then reclaiming uh, our winning streak there with three, four, five in a row? Uh, five wins in a row, and yes, the RFAs can no longer be signed. And this is the day I said that I would check for Dustin Brown. Now, do I really want to add anything to this team? I mean, we've got 32 points. That's tied with the Winnipeg Jets for first place in the West and tied for first place in the NHL. Now, we have played two more games than the Jets, which is fine. I am not. I wasn't anticipating us being President's Trophy contenders. I was expecting us to be wildcard contenders. So this is by far exceeding my expectations. And the even nicer part is we built ourselves a seven-point cushion through a quarter of the season, which is which is really, really good. You know, we could lose three, drop three points, and then be tight, right? Drop three points for the rest of the quarters of the season, and it could be good. I know some of you guys might not understand what I'm saying, and I'm kind of stretching where I'm going here. But I think I'm just saying that we're putting ourselves in a good position. Now, taking a look at free agents, Dustin Brown is still available. Just turned 38, is an exact top nine forward. He's a power forward that is very, very, very capable um, and I think it's kind of the move that a team like us, we need, that's that step we need to take. Although, let's take a look at the stats. If anybody's underperforming, if there's a line underperforming, we can take a look there um, and hopefully look to look to uh, increase some production. But I mean, off the bat, the production I'm seeing from Santa Vuri is exactly what I'd hope to see out of a rookie X Factor. 14 goals in 24 games, on pace for 40 goals in his rookie season. If he really keeps up a ridiculous pace, it'll be 50 goals in his rookie season. I'm not expecting that, but I mean, the dude is really freaking good. Then we got Ryan Getzloff turning back the clock for one last run at it, so we're not using him too frequently. I mean, he's playing 13 and a half minutes, and he's only got two power play points, but he's got 18 points. So we should expect to see Ryan Getzloff cool off, maybe finish with 40, 50 if we're lucky. But then Trevor Zegris is the guy we really, really like to see. You know, he's our medium elite to go along with Santavori. I know Raquel is also very good and also has 18 points. But the two guys I really, really care about on the forward core are Zegris and Santavori. Um, Maxime Comtois with 16 points, but nine goals on the second line. So we do have a goal scorer. And Peyton Krebs with 12 points. He's on pace to finish with 41 points this season. Uh, two goals. <laughs> Uh, am I doing that right? No, I'm not. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, he's on pace for four goals. Uh, but still, not great, right? Uh, Max Jones there as well on the third line. Kind of the forgotten guy uh, of our future. He's a medium top six. He's probably at best going to be a second liner. I think his whole career he'll be a third liner on our team because uh, we'll always have somebody slightly better than him taking that ice time on the second line. But you guys can see Emil Bemstrom, Troy Terry are putting in points on the fourth line, but they're just not playing well defensively and that's where a grinder or po well he's a power forward a power forward like Dustin Brown could really really help us so I think I might look to do that I might wait one more month see how things go if we start to dive down a little bit in the standings I will sign Dustin Brown hopefully to give us a little bit of a boost but Sam Steele there our second line center with only eight points and he's even um, does he, he does and he is getting power play time because you can see he's got a power play point. How many minutes per night? He's playing 16 and a half minutes per night. Uh, Logan Brown on the third line doing very well. So the third line seems to be punching above its weight and maybe a couple guys on the second line underperforming. Well, I really, it's only Sam, Sam Steele that's underperforming on that second line. Listen, if he's going to be solid defensively, which it looks like he's doing okay, uh, I'm fine with that. And then Benoit Olivier Gruel with uh, a goal scoring machine, no assists, he does not pass, he just rips shots, now he's shooting 26%, which is a little bit ridiculous. As you guys can see here, our shooters are, Sam Steele likes to shoot, unfortunately he's just not 
getting the goals. I mean, he's only got 84 wrist shot accuracy, so that's kind of not what I want to see. I'd like to see him pass more. But really, there's a couple guys with a really, really, you know, elite shooting clip of Santivori and Comtois. And then after that, the guys that shoot aren't really scoring too well. Raquel's not scoring very well. Zegris is not scoring very well. So we could maybe look to see those shooting percentages improve. I mean, we saw Zegris shoot at 8.6% last season. So we can expect an increase in goals from those guys. Maybe Comtois cools down a bit. Sam Steele should definitely heat up a bit. What did he shoot last season? He shot... 6.1%. Maybe he's just not a good shooting uh, player. And you guys can see the team is glitched. Um, so we won't be able to tell when he played for us. But anyway, let's take a look at the defensemen. Hampus Lindholm and Jacob Larson leading the way. Josh Mahura as well. Braden McNabb with a plus 10. Jamie Drysdale with 6 points in 24 games. As an medium elite offensive defenseman, you would think he would do better. He is getting power play time. He's playing 23 minutes a night. Second to Lindholm, which is... Probably because Lindholm's playing some penalty kill. But you guys can see Braden McNabb has got the next most time. And then Jacob Larson doing very fantastic. Now, I think these shooting percentages will go down as our, our defenders are scoring quite a few goals at this point in the season. Uh, and then our goalies, obviously, John Gibson is just having a monster season. And Stolarz having a really nice bounce back year. So putting a good team in front of our goalies does seem to help our goalies. 241 and 928 is definitely a lot better than what he did last season. Now, will he regress? Maybe a tiny bit, but I don't think he's going to drop too much. So, And I, I think, if anything, our defense will get a little weaker, uh, where our offense will pick it up a bit. But I, I did say I was going to go up to January 1st, which is the goal. And we are going to get there here right now, January 1st. I know Dustin Brown is still a free agent, and I would kind of like to sign him. Um, but as you guys can see, we do drop three of our or two of our three there. Uh, but pick it up with a couple points. Losing again, winning again in the division, winning in the conference, losing in the division, losing again. So we do kind of cool down here in the month of December, uh, dropping to second, but do kind of find our stride there against the Vancouver Canucks, who are at the bottom, right? We're beating up on a bad team, which we should be doing. We should be beating up on a bad team. And now Tevu, uh, Taro Santavuri uh, is now point per game with 24 goals. Now we should probably go two more games to get to 41 to just see... I guess I can just double it. We, I'll just double it, take a quick look at it. I do want to see, though, is Dustin Brown still a free agent? Because I, I'm obsessing over Dustin Brown. If he's still a free agent, 85 overall is still a free agent. Definitely the kind of guy I would like to bring in. He's 38. I mean, he could really help us. Maybe we bring him in. He sparks something within the team. Uh, I mean, the team doesn't need much sparking, but, you know, we are one point ahead of the Flames with a game, with, and they have a game in hand, right? So this could easily flip on an instant. Now... We are six points above the Kraken, but they have four games in hand on us. So we could really look at ourselves just plummet here in a second to the uh, to you know battling for a wild card spot with Seattle. Doesn't really look like the Central's got anybody that's going to threaten us as far as wild card race. But we are the kind of team that I pretty much expected to have. Let's take a look at the Pacific real quick team stats, and then I'll jump another quick recap. Of, of the player stats, but you can see the point percentages here. If we sort by point percentage, we're really a wild card team, but we're really, really close to the Calgary Flames. So we might be battling it out for that third seed, right? We are the two seed right now in the, in the division, but San Jose is performing much better. Obviously, Vegas is the class of this division. As you guys can see here, 3.1 goals, four per game, puts us about midway in the division, fourth out of the eight. Uh, but our goals against per game are elite. It's the second best in the division, second to only the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, taking a look at the power play, special teams is definitely an area we could look to improve. We're fourth in the division, or fifth in the division there, so the midway point. But the penalty kill, our defense, guys, is there. Uh, it's actually not as good as the rest of the division, but the rest of the division is outstandingly elite uh, when it comes to the penalty kill. So... I think, I think we're okay. We've gotten a lot of opportunities on the power play, so our 17 power play goals look nice. They actually don't even look nice. Um, we're going to have to pick it up on the power play. Maybe that's a, a, an area of the ice that I look to change. Maybe some line changes there. I haven't really touched it. I kind of focus mostly on even strength. But as you guys can see, uh, our goals four per game are the most in the division, although we've played the most games in the division. So give or take. But I'm looking at the point percentage here. We're in fourth right now. I know we're sitting in second, but point percentage-wise, we are in fourth. The good news is this regulation plus overtime win tiebreaker, we're actually killing it. We have not won a single game in a shootout. I don't know if we've lost in the shootout or anything like that, but we're absolutely killing it right now. Um, in our last 10, we're middling, right? 
So it's the kind of thing I really do want to sign Dustin Brown just to give us that little bit of a boost. And you guys can see the first line is starting to separate themselves. Santa Vuori, uh, 39 points, 24 goals, 173 shots. He is a shooter. Next best guys, Comtois, Raquel, Zegers. They've got the ice time. Sam Steele's shooting percentage has picked up a bit. Will it be enough to make up for a slow start? I don't know. Peyton Krebs is playing well. Like, the, the line is playing well. It's just Sam Steele's not doing as well as you would have hoped. Maybe he's helping on more than the score sheet, right? He's got 16 points. Getzloff with 26. Do I move Getzloff up and move Sam Steele down? Sam Steele's listed as that second line forward. Getzloff listed as the third line scoring forward. I think I want to keep the future in mind here with Sam Steele leaving him there. But if we bring in Dustin Brown, we got to figure out where we're going to put him, right? We, do we want to demote Logan Brown? Maybe we demote Max Jones. Uh, let's keep it on the forwards here real quick just so we can kind of get a look at the lines. But you can see the first line there. And then it's Comtois, Krebs, and Steele on the second line. And the, really the overperformer is Getzloff. I mean, Troy Terry's overperforming on the fourth line. Logan Brown's on the third line. Um, and then, yeah, it's Max Jones, the only minus. He's got 15 points. I just, I just don't know about it, guys. Uh, Gruel is shooting a ridiculous thir uh, 23%. We saw that earlier. I think it did come down just a bit, but taking a look at the shooting percentages there, yeah, you can see Getzloff has, I think, I mean, he, he's just shooting well. Did he shoot well last season? He shot pretty well last season, not nearly as well as this season. Uh, he's getting a little bit of power play time. We did slash his minutes a bit. He is 37. Uh, so I don't mind keeping him on the third line, but I do want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section. Is Sam Steele our second line center, or is he not ready for it? And we should get Getzloff up there, and Sam Steele should go back down to the third line, where maybe he can beat up on some lesser opponents. Defenseman-wise, Mahura leads the way with points on our third pairing, tied with Lindholm. Jamie Drysdale has picked it up defensively. Well, I guess points-wise, uh, Jacob Larson has kind of cooled off, and McNabb has nosedived in his plus-minus. It was originally our best but that second pairing seems to have done a lot worse. So maybe bringing Dustin Brown in for that second line, uh, third line would be very, very beneficial. And as I said, uh, John Gibson's stats would probably get a bit worse. His save percentage hasn't gone down too much. So it does seem like we are allowing quite a few shots, which is leading to a higher goal against average, but still a good save percentage, right? Like his goal against average was like, I think 2.48. So it's gone up a bit and 928 has gone down just a little bit. So his goal against average is going up, meaning he's allowing more goals per minute on the ice. Uh, but it's right in line with where he was last season. And last season, I think he was pretty darn fantastic. If he keeps a 920 save percentage and it maybe drops under 2.6 goal against average. Guys, I think a guy like Dustin Brown makes perfect sense for this team. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll help the penalty kill. He can even help the power play. I mean, he's got a lot of good stats. Maybe Krebs, I mean, Krebs is actually doing well with his 16 minutes a night. I, it's really, I mean, 22 points is really good. It's Sam Steele's 16. But then again, I can't be mad if he's got a good plus minus, but he doesn't, right? So maybe we look to move Logan Brown down and scratch a guy like Emil Bemstrom. Who's, I mean, he's got 12 points, right? Who do we scratch down here? Maybe Max Jones? Do I look to move on from Max Jones? He's just underwhelming, bad defensive awareness, bad offensive awareness. He's got okay puck skills and shooting, but his, his awareness just is not there. And I know he's a good fit for the scheme, but could we be doing better there? I mean, maybe moving him down and then scratching Gruel because Gruel's just hot right now. I mean, the man's just yeah, 23%. Maybe we look to get all we can out of him uh, and then scratch him and then slot in Krebs down here. Um, maybe move Comtois to center, steal down to play with Getzloff, and then we slot in a Dustin Brown right there. I mean, that could be really, really good, right? Dustin Brown, right winger with Comtois and, and Krebs. That could be the move. I'm not entirely sure. I do want to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, and then taking a look at the power play. It looks pretty darn strong. I don't know if I can get it any stronger. Maybe Bemstrom... Uh, needs to come off that second power play. Troy Terry's got a lot. Of, you know what? That might be why Troy Terry's playing so well. Uh, is simply because of his power play ice time. He's got uh, actually only one power play point. So who knows? But um, I definitely think it could be. I mean, we're not looking to our scratch players, right? We're looking to free agents. And Dustin Brown, we have the cap space, boys. If we take a look at free agents, looking down at the bottom, our cap space is $19.75 million. And we could totally fit in Dustin Brown, giving him $3 million to be our second-line winger. I mean, I know he's an 85, but look at that, guys. His passing and offensive awareness, 86-87. Defensively, he is a god uh, with that ridiculous defensive category. Just can't take faceoffs, which I'm not asking him to do. 
And he's also going to put in a good amount of goals. Guys, I think this is the, a perfect signing for us. I'll probably end up starting the next episode off by signing him unless you guys can convince me I should not. Unless you guys say, do not do it at all costs. Do not sign Dustin Brown because of X and Y and Z. You know, I mean, I know he's 38 and he might fall off towards the playoffs, but he's sitting at an 85 and he hasn't played a lick of hockey yet. So I think he's the perfect kind of signing. And we don't even need to look at the trade market right now. I just think uh, we're in a really good spot. We're fourth in the division in points percentage. Hopefully Brown, both offensively and defensively, because as you saw, our defense is elite, but I'm really looking for that offense. Peyton Krebs is putting up a lot of points, but Comtois, the shooter on that second line, we'll have to see how Dustin Brown sims. I actually do want to take a quick look. Uh, he must have played, not our contracts, thank you very much. I do need to look at, <laughs> speaking of our contracts, Contract extensions. I do need to look at those. Dustin Brown here. Take a quick look here. Um, he takes a good amount of shots. 170 playing on the third line. That's pretty good. 51 points. So he put up 20 goals. Had seven power play points. Was a plus. Yeah, I, I think he's the perfect middle six winger. He's a perfect, I mean, perfect middle six winger. I didn't want to sign him because I wanted to give our younger guys some opportunities here. Uh, but I do think this is potentially a really, really good season for us. I mean, we are sitting, like I said, at fourth. Just a couple point percentages out of second. Probably not going to catch the Golden Knights, but could go on a run in the postseason. And Dustin Brown, I mean, look, nobody's offering him a contract. And I know we may be not the most desirable spot for a ring-chasing guy, a ring-chasing vet like Dustin Brown. But sometimes they don't get the offers from the, the good teams because they're asking for $2.7 But we can afford that. And he's the perfect kind of guy we need. They're taking a look at our future contracts. Speaking of, uh, both Comtois and Drysdale and Zegris all want contract extensions. So does Ryan Getzloff. And like I said, he's going to stick around for as long as I, uh, I as, as he wants. And oh yeah, I am going to give uh, Drysdale five and a half million for eight years. I would 100% do that. He's medium elite. It's a low low contract of five and a half eight years sign me up for that uh next guy i want to look at is zegris for eight years it's only 8.8 .8. i'll try and get away with eight and a half uh but i think that's a great deal for a guy like zegris who we already see is putting up a mad amount of points uh and he's only going to get better right he can only he's only going to jump up from 84 i mean by the time we start next season don't be surprised if zegris is an 87 I'm going to offer him that contract extension as well. I'm going to wait on the other guys. We can take a look at what Comtois wants. Uh, I feel like six years at four and a half is perfect for Comtois. That's the, he'll be 29 at the end of that contract. Um, we can lock him up until, uh, you know, he, he starts to get towards the end of his prime. And then we'll make a decision on him, right? So I think we'll probably do that contract as well. Cap space is of no concern to us. But... That is all the time I have for this one, guys. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one.